Contrary to popular opinion, I don't always think of different communication styles as healthy or unhealthy. However, communication can be appropriate and inappropriate. An appropriate communication style achieves its goal in the given situation. If you're new here, my name is Doris. I'm a relationship coach with a master's in psychology and I help smart romantics build meaningful relationships. So let's look at four kinds of communication and when to use them. Passive communication is about not saying what's on your mind. When you sit back and don't express your opinions, desires or needs, you're being passive. You may not get what you want, but you also don't rock the boat. There are times when it's appropriate to be passive. For example, you don't care about others knowing your opinion. Maybe you enjoy gathering information and learning about them first. Or when the time just isn't right. Certain situations may require you to wait until another time to express yourself. For example, if your partner is already having a bad day, maybe tell them about the car bill tomorrow. It's especially appropriate to be passive when expressing yourself is dangerous. You don't want to escalate an already unsafe situation. Having said that, here's how being passive in your communication with your partner can cause problems though. If you don't communicate, they won't know what you think or want, so you may not get what you need or want. The romantic notion of the right partner will just get me is unfortunately not realistic. Passive or non-communication can also negatively affect your emotional intimacy in various ways. Your partner may become frustrated because they don't know what's important to you and feel shut out. Your partner may feel unappreciated or unimportant or that you don't trust them. And when you don't stand up for yourself, others may take advantage of you. When you project yourself as being super easygoing and not having any needs or complaints, other people, even your partner, may take advantage of that. Staying passive over extended periods of time, you might also reinforce within yourself the notion that you are not important. This makes it more difficult for you to set healthy boundaries. Standing up for yourself is a skill and it's a muscle you can exercise. On the opposite end of that spectrum is aggressive communication. Aggressive communication is about saying this is what it is. When you're aggressive in stating your needs or opinions, you do so in such a way that leaves no room for people to express their needs or opinions. There are times aggressive communication is appropriate. For example, if someone is taking advantage of you, you want to tell them to stop in a no-nonsense way. People who take advantage of others may not listen unless your message is given in a direct or aggressive manner. Also, you may be speaking aggressively to your partner if you feel like they aren't paying attention to your needs. It's hard to control in the heat of the moment sometimes. When confronting a bully, using an aggressive tone might also help to get through to them. The downside and potential issue with aggressive communication in a relationship is that you give off an energy which says there is no room for negotiation, and by extension, that you don't care about other people's input. A meaningful relationship is usually a partnership, so both or all parties have something to say and contribute to the situation. Next up, passive aggression, the passive way to being hostile. If you're using the passive aggressive style, you're expressing your hostility without seeming to do so. It's the fake friendly dance many relationships fall into over time and with growing resentment. So if you recognize any of these in your relationship, it's probably time to have a heart to heart chat. Saying you'll do something, but then forgetting about it. This is a common and sometimes unconscious passive aggressive behavior. We'll talk about assertive communication next, but basically if you don't want to do something, say you don't want to do it. You can say no to your partner without the whole relationship falling apart. Boundaries are your friend. Refusing to speak when angry or giving the cold shoulder. This is also called stonewalling and is one of Gottman's four behaviors that you don't want to become a habit. This behavior increases feelings of separation and the more you do it, the more difficult it will be to find a way back together. Instead of shutting them out, tell your partner you need a break and then continue the conversation at a time when you both feel calm and ready. Using sarcasm to mock or ridicule is another way of passive aggressive communication. And although sarcasm can sometimes be funny, when used regularly, it demonstrates hostility, meanness, and a lack of respect for your partner. It's a lead into contempt, which according to Gottman is a predictor for divorce. So unless that's where you're intending to go, this approach to communication is quite inappropriate. Passive aggressive communication can also look like hiding aggression so that it's difficult to confront, such as talking behind your partner's back or mumbling so they can hear your voice but not really understand your words. Again, it may feel like a powerful move in the moment, but over time, this will only lead to division and separation. So last but not least, assertive communication is about letting people know what you want. If you're using the assertive style, you're expressing your thoughts and feelings in a factual, non-judgmental, authentic way. You take responsibility for your part in the interaction and there is no blaming or shaming involved. Being assertive in your communication is the most effective way to express your needs and opinions and to set loving boundaries from a place of empathy. Some characteristics of the assertive style are telling people in a respectful and direct manner what you want them to know, stating calmly what you need, expressing your opinions without putting anyone down. Advantages are that everyone knows where they stand and has the opportunity to react from their adult selves because you're not talking down to anyone. The assertive communication style can create issues in relationships with people who are at different levels of ego development or consciousness. 
For example, someone in victim mode might purposefully misunderstand and twist your words around because you're holding them accountable doesn't serve them. At the same time, ask yourself if your assertiveness is truly coming from an empathic state and whether your goals are in the highest interest of all concerned. You'll know by continually checking in with your partner and making sure both you and they feel heard and understood. If you're the type who likes a journal, I'll put some prompts in the description below. Please let me know any comments or questions you might have and I'll see you in the next video.